David Cather, and we're here to talk about this MCI drill, Mass Casualty Incident Drill. What you're about to see here are students running all over from many different states. Jarrell, how many different places are students here from? We have students here from eight high schools, we call them academies, and there are three junior high schools or uh, junior academy. And how many students are here? We have uh, 175 students. We have about 209 people with the sponsors. Yes, there's an explosion at Atlantic Union College at 103 George Hill Road in South Lancaster. Yes, in South Lancaster, Massachusetts. Those people in here that? Yeah, I, I don't know. The place is clouded. It's a, lots of cloud. Not sure what is exploded, but it's, there's a loud noise, an explosion, and it's at 103 George Hill Road. Okay, we will try and dispatch all of them. Yes, why well. No, I don't know how many injured. Thank you very much.
Okay, I've got Shirley coming in. Um, we got one right here, we got one right here. Make sure you guys evaluate their sheets and look at the sheets and I'll give you more information.
ALS or BLS for her? Hold on. She's ALS. Well, I don't right. know if we've got enough ALS. What do we have for complaints? I don't know. She should have a, a paper with her. alarm went off, what we saw was uh, a moment of hesitation, and then when the students saw that uh, the smoke to be billowing out, uh, they began to assess what the situation was. We saw uh, the police, uh, the fire chief, uh, Chief Hansen, he brought his, uh, you know, his command truck out here, and as we saw that, uh, the students immediately kicked in. So the students came and the firemen into a surprise scenario. Where there was fog and smoke all over. They couldn't see where they were going. The alarms were going off. That creates the setting and the venue where they walk in, they get that surprise element, and now they have to think twice using their comms, talk with each other, and figure out how to work as a team. So in those about 45 victims, we had a mixture of some that were dead on arrival, uh, some that were yellow, as you've seen on the tarps, that, um, you know, they're not gonna die, the red being the more acute. They were brought to the treatment area out here. They did an excellent job, but there was something unique that I want you to talk about that you'll never see in another drill. We train this to paramedics around the world in docs. Um, I'm on the faculty with the BIDMC there at Harvard University. And that is to use emotional and spiritual care. 
We call it psychological first aid. Psychological or first aid. Crisis responders. Can you talk about these youth? They were involved. We saw them from the beginning to right now, right there giving that psychological first aid. What's that about? The psychological first aid is helping our students know how to uh, talk to a, a victim and be able to share with them that they're not going to leave them, uh, give them uh, any help, uh, sensitive help if they, if they would like to have some spiritual, if they believe in faith or prayer, they will be given. They, they also will do a brief assessment. Uh, you know, are, are they cognitive, triage, good. Yeah, uh, cognitively, you know, good. the eyes, the, the, the touch, and then they will stay with that uh, victim Man, until they, did a good they job. get transported. They were staying with them. They, they were walking with them out of the building. Yep. They were staying with them here in the. So the, the interesting areas. thing is, it's been proven that about 70% of people can go into shock even if they have no medical symptoms. So when you stay with them and communicate, you touch them, it's amazing how many of them can be prevented from going into shock. We saw that, we they saw did well. And, and the paramedics were learning as well. Um, how to communicate, how to listen, how to do voice triage. Um, <laughs> the youth did a great job along with the emergency profession. And, and you know, I was so excited to see uh, Lancaster, Clinton, and other uh, fire departments, police department. I mean, they have done nothing but just cooperate yes. with us. They have been over backwards. They've given us every assistance. I cannot say enough to say thank you. Uh, it is just phenomenal. What they've been learning is how to work as a team in also mass casualty situations, working with the local emergency personnel. Now for the last several days, they've been training and rotating in different stations, learning everything from CPR, uh, learning things on choking, learning things on triaging, uh, how to be able to get ready for a big drill such as this. We are really thankful to be working with our emergency professionals here in Lancaster and other areas, private uh, paramedic ambulance groups that you've been seeing. But safety and security is always number one. How do you think the students did today? What kind of a learning experience do you think they went through today? I, I, think, I think our students just uh, experienced something that uh, is almost indescribable in value. And also uh, for them to be able to experience this from the professional and from their own training level. Those yeah. two things have come together for them. And I, I think that this will be something they'll never forget. You know, when youth are trained professionally, emergency personnel love to collaborate with them. This has been an ideal partnership together. CERT is something that's been around for years, community emergency response teams, and that's where our teenagers can help in situations when the system is overwhelmed. Um, I work around the world training a lot of firemen, fire chiefs, police departments. It has been exciting to see the police here working together with us. Uh, just a couple of nights ago, the, it kicked off with a, a shooter event. So this is happening in a lot of our schools. So bringing an awareness, preparedness is a key. Safety and security is utmost when it comes to training our youth and young people. We want them to be safe first, but most importantly, when something happens in your area, like a hurricane, snowfall, a lot of the incidents that have been happening all around Massachusetts and other states, our youth can be there first to be first responders. So that's what they're being trained to do uh, right here in Lancaster, Massachusetts at Atlantic Union College. My name is Mike Hanson, the fire chief in Lancaster. And this morning we conducted an MCI drill with the Atlantic Union Conference and a group called GR3. Um, what it was was a few days of training with uh, SLA kids from around the world on incident command, disaster, and leadership. Uh, they, they approached us to do this drill to kind of give um, some guidance on people that want to get involved in this and do insert team type stuff. So the drill we did was an explosion at the college gym during a basketball game. Um, we ended up with about 50 victims and the way it worked out was with the fire department response and the EMS, an MCI was declared and lots of mutual aid ambulances were called in. Um, we went through the whole thing as a realistic drill. Our fire trucks responded. They stretched lines. They did search and rescue. The building was filled with smoke. Uh, the first crews going in encountered heavy smoke and multiple victims in the gym on the basketball court. As more apparatus showed up, they were realizing there was a balcony area with more victims on the second floor. 
So it taxed our firefighters to the max because they had to wear SCBA, not knowing any extent of fire or not knowing how many victims they had or the cause of the explosion. Um, and with this particular drill, the kids that have been here for the last four days training, they were integrated with our fire crews. So they actually went along and observed what our guys were doing and in some instances helped take victims out. And in most cases, in a big scenario like this, you would probably get kids or parents that are already on scene that would try helping people get out. So their training over the last few days allowed them to learn how to do it the right way, the safe way, and then what to expect from us when we get on scene. So the initial response uh, was somewhat chaotic because through the front door of the gym there was probably 50, 60 people coming out of the gym at once as our firefighters were trying to get in and the kids were playing the role, they were screaming, they were yelling, some were walking wounded that were coming out with you know cuts and bruises. They encountered heavy smoke, a uh, bunch of victims on the floor. The second crews had to go upstairs where there was more smoke and more victims. And all I think we had about 40 to 45 victims and most of those being transported to Clinton Hospital. But for the purposes of the drill, we contacted CMED, which is our regional EMS control, and we played it out the full way, where they would actually direct what hospitals they'd go to. And they were telling us where to go, but just for purposes of the drill, they all went to Clinton, got dropped off, got on a bus to come back here. Um, the students played the role to the point where in the triage area that was set up, you know, people acted as parents, press, they were rushing the triage, trying to find out information. Uh, firefighters, police, security had to hold these people back. Um, it was a very chaotic scene and very realistic. At one point we had a van, which is still parked there. They came flying up and it was a group of parents and they came rushing the front of the building looking for their kids. Um, could really possibly happen in a school situation. Maybe not so much in a college, because most colleges, you know, people come from all over the country to go there so their parents aren't readily available. But in an elementary school or something, you would have all these parents showing up, wanting to know what's going on. So it was a good drill for us to learn how to do scene control, perimeter control, and it, it tested our skills on the mass casualty incident with the EMS. I mean, the fire side was very simple. I mean, they go in, they put the fire out, they start rescuing victims. EMS side of the house, as you can see, took a lot longer to, to continue. I'm not sure what time it is, but the fire side is probably about a 40 minute part of the drill. EMS probably an hour, hour and a half, because they have to triage each patient, find out what's exactly going on, and then where they're going to go, and wait for ambulances to get here. Because obviously we don't have 25 ambulances sitting in town waiting for an incident like this. So I think we had Boylston, Woods, Sterling, Bolton, Clinton, and then Lancaster's ambulances on scene. And it takes a while for all of them to get here. And we called them from their respective towns just to get the realistic effect of how long it would take them to get here. So everything was done real, real lifetime. Um, and in the end, it was very successful. Um, the kids did a great job. I think they got a lot out of this. Um, the people that put this on, the conference, uh, David Cantor, they did a great job with teaching the kids. Our guys worked with them throughout the week on Friday. They did a lot of EMS training with them. So they were part of this training while it was going on. And it was great interaction with the college, the conference, and the town.